Good evening, YouTube. Have you ever wondered how to reassemble an 1851 Navy? Well, that's what I'm actually going to do in this video. And if you haven't watched my previous video, I actually disassembled this gun. And uh, just to let you guys know that last time when I disassembled it, I did not take the back strap off of the grips. So all you got to do is just literally just pull these two pieces apart and they all come apart and you just got to put them down and that's it and that was all I pretty much had to add on to the last video uh, just to let you guys know once again all the information that I get uh, to describe this gun as far as the parts are concerned are listed on Brownell's website and I'll go ahead and give you guys the link to that in the description but what I recommend that you watch before you actually see this is you see the disassembly process so we're going to talk about reassembling this gun today and I'm going to talk about first about what equipment you need uh, in order to do this before you even actually get started. So the first thing that you're going to need is you are going to need a nipple wrench, especially with an 1851 or any kind of cap and ball revolver, you're going to need the correct nipple wrench for that caliber. You're also going to need some kind of a punch, preferably a small punch. Uh, at some point because things sometimes have either a hard time getting in somewhere or also getting back out. You're also going to need your hammer all right, or mallet, something that has a plastic end or a rubber end to it to protect the metal. You're also going to need, I recommend that you get something that is magnetized to hold all your small parts, but as you can see I actually put all my small parts on the table for you to actually view so that we can go step by step. You're going to need a good fitting screwdriver. I got this one from Walmart. I recommend that you get something similar to that or something that might be better. And you are also going to need something to possibly hammer on. If you're gonna uh, use a table, I recommend you put something uh, rubber down so that you, if you need to hammer something onto that gun or need to hammer especially the wedge, you're going to need some place that's nice and soft so that you don't ding up your weapon. You're also going to need to coat your table with something like a rug or a carpet or a cloth, some type of material that's going to keep you from dinging up the surface. And then I'm also going to recommend that you get some kind of uh, some kind of gun lubricant or cleaner that's uh, that is recommended by gunsmiths or any uh, any regular retail store. I use Break Free just because I think it's awesome in protecting against rust. I've heard really good things about it and I've had nothing but good things to say about it. So I recommend you get Break Free and I'll show you how I use that in this video. You're also going to need some type of cloth to apply the Break Free. So just get something. Uh, you can use paper towels. I use a cloth. Um, I also went ahead and bought this uh, this rag. Basically, it's kind of like a more sterile rag than the rag that I'm using with the Break Free that basically just wipes down the gun and takes any fingerprint marks off of it that might already be on it. Also, as I said before in previous videos, I recommend you have some kind of gloves, plastic gloves, so that you don't uh, accrue uh, moisture on the weapon after, even after you've cleaned it and reassembled it. Uh, you can keep your fingerprints off of it with these. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and reassemble this gun. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to reassemble the cylinder. And the cylinder is just going to have, obviously you got the cylinder and then you're going to have the nipples that go to it. And this is where a nipple wrench is going to come in handy. And let's see how this goes. great thing about this is that virtually most of the cap and ball revolvers that are similar to the 1851 Navy, much like the 1860 and uh, the pocket model, they're all relatively similar. So you can pretty much use this video to help you reassemble any of those other cap and ball revolvers that you may have in your collection.
Okay, so just so you can see, all the nipples are back on the cylinder, all six of them. So I'm just going to go ahead and set that down for now. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the back strap and then the grips, and I'm just going to simply put the back strap in the little slot here in the back of the grips, and they pretty much just should slide together just like that. Okay. Once that's together, I'm going to go ahead and grab the frame, and then I'm going to put this in in a certain sequential order. I recommend that you do it this way. Uh, you don't have to, but I found this is the easiest way to do it. So I recommend you do it my way. And what you're going to do is you're going to take the bolt. You're going to put that in first since that was the, pretty much the last thing you took out. Make sure that to get it lined up with that hole that it comes out of. The, that you use some sort of a punch. There we go. Next thing you're going to do is you're actually going to go ahead and uh, take your bolt screw and you're going to put that through kind of just hold it in place and then you're going to take your trigger you're going to go ahead and set that in the slot right next to the bolt and you're going to take your trigger screw and you're going to go ahead and put that in just to kind of hold it in place as well there you go I'm just going to set that down for a second next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take the hammer and I'm going to put the hand on the hammer and the hand goes right in this little slot right here okay so this is where the hammer screw would go and this is where the hand and the handspring would go just like that or like that I should say so you're going to take that assembly, you're just going to kind of manipulate the trigger, and you're going to go ahead and just drop that in. Sometimes it goes right away, sometimes it doesn't. Then I'm going to put the hammer screw. I'm going to go ahead and put that in just to kind of hold it in place. And then at the same time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bolt and sear spring and I'm going to go ahead and put that in. And it should go just like that. You need to make sure that it goes in the right way. Uh, basically, the way you know that is you know that the spring extends. To the trigger. Alright, if you flip it the other way, it's actually going to be too short and it won't even touch the trigger. So you need to have something that will actually uh, allow the trigger to, uh, to uh, basically uh, lock on to. Now you're going to take your uh, bolt spring sear screw which is right here and you're going to go ahead and you're going to tighten that down You want to make sure that it's just nice and snug. 
All right, with these screws, you're gonna have to put a little bit of pressure on. Uh, sometimes they go right in, sometimes they don't. So we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna have to switch out my screw head because these are a little bit smaller. And normally what I do is I like to do my trigger, my uh, hammer screw first because that's usually the easiest. See there, it went right in. And then I'm gonna do the other screws. It doesn't matter in what order. As long as they're lined up with the hole and you apply a little bit of pressure, it should go through. Okay, I have my frame together. Now to make sure that it actually works is what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull back on the hammer. Make sure that the bolt, if you can actually see it, the bolt actually drops down to signify that it's actually in half cock and when it's in full cock it should go back up, which it does. And then in order to disengage that, you just merely pull the trigger push the hammer forward and it should fall and the bolt should remain in the up position for that. Okay, so we have that on. We have that all together. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take my grip frame and I'm going to start putting it together. I'm going to start with the mainspring and then I'm going to put the uh, mainspring back on its slot here and I'm going to put the mainspring screw back on. But I'm not going to over I'm not going to tighten this too much. Okay? Uh, I'll show you why that is in just a second here. Okay? So I want it a little bit wobbly like so so I can move it back and forth. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take my frame and put it on top of my grip frame. Okay. And then what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to take uh, the screws, begin with the grip frame screws, and I'm going to go ahead and start putting them in. To hold that in place. I can't remember the name of this screw. This front screw right here is not the bolt screw, is not the uh, grip frame, is not a grip frame screw. It's actually called something else. So I'm not going to call it a grip frame screw because it's not. The other five that I'm going to put in are. Just so you can see that, I'm going to go ahead and flip it a little bit. Once again, just make sure you're taking your time with this. Don't rush it. If you rush this and you mess it up, you're going to get a little frustrated. The first time I took this pistol apart, and I mean the very first time, it actually took me five hours to get it back together. Why? Because I was really angry with myself for not getting it back together the first time, and also uh, because I really didn't pay attention to what I was doing. But now that I know what I'm doing, this isn't going to take as long, unless I keep talking, of course. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is, now that I've tightened my grip frame screw, that screws down here, I'm going to actually take my mainspring that's been wobbly this whole time. And the whole point of the mainspring is to basically allow for pressure to be on the hammer, uh, have forward pressure on the hammer so that when it drops, it drops with enough authority that it sets off the, front, the uh, cap that you have on the nipple. All right. And so what you're going to see here, because I've made this mistake before, is you're going to have this little roller piece right here that is attached to the back of the hammer. You need to make sure that the mainspring goes underneath that. The best way to do that is to have this loose and then merely just apply a little bit of pressure 
and then fit it right underneath right underneath the hammer. And there you go. Okay. Once you're done with that, you're going to go ahead and tighten down the main spring screw. And then you shouldn't have to touch the mainspring again. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take the rest of my grip frame. I'm just merely going to put it back on like so. Should fit together just like that. I usually start with the bottom grip frame screw just because it's going to allow the uh, two screws in the back here to line up better with the frame. I'm going to go ahead and put my remaining grip frame screws in and proceed to tighten those down. That one's not going in right away, and that's okay. It might be because I don't have the frame quite lined up. It looks like this one's going to go in just fine. Try this one again. Should go in this time. Okay, and it did, and I'm just going to tighten down all of the screws that I have put in so far, just to make sure that this gun is nice and tight, because sometimes these screws do come loose after uh, you fire several, uh, several competitions. I know that's happened a couple times. The screws will loosen up and you just got to go through and tighten them. Another thing that will fix that is if you put uh, Loctite on some of the screws. I don't recommend doing that because obviously you got to clean this thing and it's a pain in the butt to break the seal on the uh, Loctite and then take that off and do it all over again. So I wouldn't do it. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put the barrel back together. Now there's a specific way that the rammer and the lever go together. Um, you need to make sure that when you put this on that the rammer is actually uh, in a certain position. And I'll show you what I mean. So there's two sides to this. All right. There is this side in which the uh, hole for the screw is going more upward, and then if you flip it over, it's going more downward. You need it in the more downward position. Otherwise, your rammer is not going to actually ram the ball home. It's going to get stuck on the barrel prior to even getting to the cylinder. I'm going to take my rammer screw I don't know if you can tell it's actually raining here outside so the uh, noise that you hear aside from my voice is the rain hitting the metal of the building that I'm in
All right, so my rammer is attached. Okay, I shouldn't have any issues with that. I'm gonna go ahead and put the assembly, lever and rammer assembly back on. Line the lever up with the lever screw hole. Go ahead and put the lever screw in. I'm just gonna screw that down. All right, now once again, just to show you, all right, so you got the barrel and the lever assembly, and in order to make sure that this functions, you need to basically be able to drop the lever, and the rammer should be able to go through that hole in the barrel and into the cylinder. If you had that uh, rammer assembly flipped the other way, the, barrel, the uh, lever wouldn't even go past here. Okay, so in, in that respect, if you end up having that issue, just make sure that you unscrew this and you take the rammer out and you flip it the other way and then re-screw it back in and you shouldn't have any problems in there. Okay, so we're done with the barrel for now. We're going to go ahead and put our cylinder back on, like so. We're going to go ahead and put the barrel back on to the frame. And then we're just going to go ahead and push this wedge back in far enough so that it protrudes from the other side. Sometimes you have to Okay, so the other thing I want to tell you guys is that the wedge is what keeps the barrel on the frame, holds that, that assembly together, and what it's doing is it's pushing into the arbor in there and uh, basically is forcing the arbor and the barrel together. So that's how it's holding it on. The only issue that you have to worry about with the wedge is that Sometimes people have a tendency to be a little overzealous and push it in too far. And what's going to happen with that is if you push it in too far, the cylinder is not going to turn. So it doesn't mean that you guys messed up anything if that ends up happening. What you need to do is if the cylinder is not spinning freely on half cock, you need to just go ahead, undo the wedge, undo the wedge and then just re-hammer it in to the point where it's no longer providing any resistance, okay? And then we're gonna go ahead and do a quick functions check. All right, so we're gonna go on half cock, make sure that the cylinder is free to spin, which it is. We're gonna put it on full cock, make sure it's actually locked into place. And I'm gonna go ahead and do it six times, pulling the trigger each time, making sure that it lands on a nipple, all right? And then, of course, when it's in the down position, making sure that the cylinder doesn't spin freely. All right, so as you can see, that is how you reassemble this weapon. It is completely reassembled, no issues with it. The timing is good, and it's ready to fire for its next shooting. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is this is where that brake free is going to come in. I'm going to take my brake free. I'm going to take my rag that I talked about. I'm going to go ahead and just spray some stuff on. All right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and coat this thing with some brake free. Basically, just apply it to the metal so that I don't have to worry about much. Normally, what would happen is when I clean this, I would apply brake free to all the parts before I reassemble it. And you'll see that when I actually clean this weapon. But as a final act, I'm going to go ahead and apply brake free to all the metal surfaces once it's all together and it's okay if your hands get coated in it and then uh, if you're handling this without gloves I'd recommend that you use some type of rag to just wipe it off before you put it in your safe and uh, other than that that's pretty much how you reassemble an 1851 Navy so uh, YouTubers, feel free to like, subscribe. If you want me to do more of these videos, by all means, let me know.
and I'll uh, look forward to seeing you next week when we actually will have time to clean this thing and I'll show you the step-by-step -step process in which I actually clean the pistol. Alright, y'all have a good night. See you next week.